Well, 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 today I have the distinct privilege of talking with a chef. And this guy is a bona fide chef. Not only is he a chef, he actually is a plant-based chef. And his whole um, mission is really to educate people on how to eat healthier and how to learn to cook for themselves with a plant-based lifestyle and food as medicine. Jason Demchok has been a chef for over 30 years now, and he is very committed to lifestyle medicine and working particularly with doctors, MDs, because as he says, MDs have the same challenges that the rest of us have. And actually, I think they have more of a challenge because they are role models. And if they're not walking the talk of health, how can we believe them? So Jason, great to have you on the show. Are you ready to live the life you deserve? Do you want to feel vibrantly healthy and reach your optimal weight without dieting while being kind to animals and the planet? Then you're in the right place at the right time. Get ready to hear from doctors, nutritionists, experts, and everyday men and women committed to creating a powerful life in mind, body, and soul through ethical food choices. Welcome to Plant-Based Eating for Health with your host, Certified Plant-Based Nutritionist, Kathleen Gage. Well, thank you so much. It's an honor and pleasure. And you just described my mission so well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, and that's why I wanted to have you on the show, because I think it's really important for people who do have a mission of health, of compassion to the animals in the environment, um, that they share their message. And my whole mission is helping you to amplify yours. So with that, when did you first uh, go plant-based and why did you go plant-based? Well, good question. Actually, it's quite recent compared to a lot of people, but um, once I got it, I was all in. Um, I started actually in my 20s. Um, I was doing vegetarian. So I was eating cheese and dairy without knowing all the harm that does and to our bodies, to the animals, obviously, and the environment. Um, but then I got, you know, sucked into this whole paleo thing where it's like, you can't get this, you need animal products, you got to go for the meat, you need the carnitine. So reluctantly, I was like, okay, I'll eat some fish. And then that turned into a little bit of whey protein. Then it turned into like full on meat, even though it it really disgusted me. I just thought like, what am I going to do? This is what the human body needs. I guess I have to do this. And that went on for a long time, never felt quite that healthy actually, but I just thought like, well, maybe I need a different supplement. So I'm taking 50 different supplements, trying to figure out what is wrong with me, eliminating more and more plants. And it was just a downward spiral. And um, I met this amazing MD named Dr. Liu, Dr. Shanhong Liu. And she blew me away with with her case studies and her knowledge of environmental toxins, hormones. I was like, this woman is top notch. This is, you know, and then and then um, she told me, try the whole food plant-based diet. And I almost like, I, I almost I actually did argue with her a bit about it. I went, I pushed back a little bit. I'm like, that can't be right. Like, I've read all these books that say that, you know, you got to eat meat. And she's like, you know, I have a PhD in human physiology. I think I know a little bit what I'm talking about. I work with hundreds of patients. So she's like, try it for like two weeks. So I did. First two weeks of my life since I was born basically where I didn't eat cheese or since I was like two years old that I didn't eat cheese. I grew up on macaroni and cheese and grilled cheese. And even when I was, you know, more fancy and thinking I was healthy, buying these expensive grass fed cheeses from, uh, from uh, you know, France and Italy. And two weeks after doing that, all of a sudden my gut started feeling better. And the, the desire for cheese just disappeared because now I know that cheese has morphine in it, has a, has a form of morphine. So I was literally addicted. And now I could enjoy these some of these great plant-based cheeses and you get the same flavor without that like, like you know, heroin, without that, without that high. And so that, so that was about two years ago. And it's been, like I said, it's been, I've, commi- I've stuck to it the whole time easily. And I love eating my fruits again because I had given up fruits and whole grains and I'm just loving my food. My, my, I'm so much more excited to cook again because I was cooking like meat and just a couple of boring dishes. And now it's now, you know, now I get to really take advantage of all my culinary skills. So 
Well, let's, my- let's take, you know, there's a lot to unwrap there because it's, it's so amazing how people don't realize that cheese really is as addictive, if not more addictive than uh, some of the, the strongest drugs we have, cocaine, heroin, all of that, because um, they are made that way. And the food manufacturers actually have, they have scientists that get it dialed in exactly as it needs to be to get us hooked into certain foods. So, you know, th- there's a lot of truth in the, in what you're saying there. And it's amazing how one person can actually change the direction of our life. And, and Dr. Lou sounds like uh, she was the one for you. Um now, with your culinary background, let's talk about that. You you have quite a bit of experience with that. And um, how has that changed for you since going plant-based? Well, yeah, it's like I started cooking when I was seven with my father. And we would go to, like, I lived, for, I lived in New York. So we went to, like, the Indian area in Edison, New Jersey, and the Chinatown. So I, I was always exposed to a lot of different vegetables. And then I lived in Japan for two years and they have an amazing diet with fermented vegetables. And, and again, I was so, so I was trained in cooking all these different vegetables and India, I lived in India too. And then as I started getting afraid, I read the book Plant Paradox. So I got afraid of vegetables. So little by little, my vegetables were getting less and less. And then again, once the doors were open again to eating plants, um, oh my God, now I'm, you know, I, I, I'm like doc, Dr. B from the book Fiber Fueled. Mm-hmm. I just listened to him today, actually. He was on an interview and he said, I'm more interested in diversity of fiber than any superfood. So that's, that's what's so exciting is like, it's not just enough to just be like, okay, I'm plant-based and I'm going to eat rice every day and, and right. black beans every day. It's really important to get as many different vegetables of all different colors and textures. Like you want to get as much variety as possible because that creates the most diversity of the microbiome. So once I heard that, I'm like, okay, this gives me permission. So when I, when I do my whole grains and I soak them overnight, again, I do all the traditional methods. You know, and it's easy and fun. It sounds like it's a lot of work, but it's so it's so easy. It's so fun. It's so easy to learn this. And once you have these foundational skills that we have used as a human, you know, as human civilization for 10,000 years, we've been fermenting and soaking. So when I make my my grains, for example, I'll do like one part millet, one part kamut and one part barley or brown rice. So I'm getting three grains instead of one. Um, and so, so I, and, and then I do fermented vegetables. So, you know, I'll, 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 right now I have some pickles, some, some cucumbers with radish, with jalapeno peppers, with garlic, with cilantro, fresh turmeric, fresh ginger. I just throw all that in there and ferment it. Well, so, let me let me stop you there because yeah. you know this is kind of a new language to me about fermenting. Um, and and I've talked to a few people who are very into fermenting. Uh, what's the benefit of the fermentation? Okay, so from it, the benefits keep coming out. You know, I love again, I love Dr. B, fiber fueled, and he keeps going through the latest research, and he keeps showing that um, you know fermented vegetables just increase all markers of health, but. From what I understand is when you're fermenting, you're actually breeding a whole, you know, ecosystem inside the food, you know, like you're taking the bacteria that are already in the food. There's already when you pick a cabbage, there's there's bacteria on the skin of the cabbage, on Mm -hmm. the skin of the radishes. And when you put them in a in a brine, you know, I use very little salt. And what, what happens is the bacteria will eat the sugars in the cabbage and then they start to multiply and multiply and multiply and they need b vitamins and c vitamins they produce their own b and c and they also create enzymes and they also make the food and the minerals more bioavailable so when you just take like you know two tablespoons or like a half a pickle let's say put that with your meal you're getting probiotics so you don't need to take the probiotic pill and not only getting probiotics but you're getting like the local in your environment probiotics you're getting the ones that are in you know everyone's home everyone's environment is slightly different so you're getting this you know you're breeding these bacteria that are like in your own home so to speak 
So, you know, there's, there's some evidence that could help with allergies and stuff. So you're getting more B vitamins, more C vitamins, more enzymes. So, you know, when you cook food, you lose enzymes, right? And when you eat raw foods, you have the enzymes. But when you have fermented foods, you actually have more enzymes. So it makes all of the other foods you're eating with the fermented foods more digestible. So with the fermenting, what's the process? Because, you know, I know that for a lot of people, just the the whole idea of plant-based cooking seems overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, how do I go from the traditional sad diet to having so many plants and all the color of, of the rainbow in my diet? So how does one do the fermenting? Can we do it ourselves or do we have, oh, to yeah. have somebody else do it? It, it literally takes five minutes. Um, okay. My program, I have eight traditional foundational whole food skills. Mm -hmm. And once you learn these eight skills, I don't teach recipes. I teach the ABCs. You know, so once you have this skill of making fermented vegetables, the sky's the limit. You could literally throw in anything you want and, and it's the same process. So in my program, I have, uh, you know, videos and each video is like five to 10 minutes. That's how long it takes to do everything. And there is a learning curve. That's the challenge, you know, but it's not difficult. It's not time consuming. It's actually saves you a lot of money and you're going to feel great. And the food is delicious. So it's, it's just a win-win all around. But um, there is a learning curve. You know, it's, it's, it's look, people have resistance to learning new things, but it's really as simple as, you know, making the right solution, which is basically just salt and water mm -hmm. and, putting the vegetables in there. And I do recommend this, um, these fermentation tops. So it's very inexpensive on Amazon. They're a few dollars. And I learned fermenting without these tops. And when you do that, you run the risk of the, of the, the, the water. As the fermentation process is happening, the bacteria is producing, I guess, carbon dioxide gases. You know, that's mm -hmm. how you make beer and champagne. It's, the, it's fermented, right? So that causes the water to overflow. So you have to constantly open it. They call it burping. You have to constantly burp it. With these tops, you no longer have to do that. So it is so simple. You put the vegetables in the brine, you cover it. And there's, there's some specific things you got to keep in mind, which again, I cover in my program, but you just cover it up, set it aside for five days to seven days, and then it's done. You don't even have to cook it. It's just, it just does it on its own. It, it, it seems so simple, and, and I'm going to have to definitely try it. And I want to remind people, you're listening to the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show. I'm your host, Kathleen Gage, and I'm talking with Jason Demchuk, who is, uh, he's a chef, and he teaches fer fermentation to people. Um, he works with doctors, and his whole mission is to get people healthier um, with lifestyle medicine. So, Jason, first of all, how can people find you? What's the easiest website or social media handle to find you on? Yeah, pretty much it's culinary wisdom everywhere, but the website is culinarywisdomskills.com. Okay. Uh, Instagram is culinary.wisdom. YouTube is culinary wisdom. And um, on LinkedIn, it's Jason Demchuk. I'm pretty active okay. on LinkedIn. We'll make sure that's in the show notes so that people can easily find you. So, And, and by the way, anyone from your show who reaches out to me, I'll give them a free lesson. I'll Excellent. give them one of the eight free lessons. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm going to raise my hand on you, that. You got because, it. You're going to yeah, get the absolutely. fermentation one. So... Again, now the the process of fermenting, would I be fermenting a large amount of uh, vegetables to begin with? Walk me through that and, and sure. do it as if you're talking to a five-year-old because I have the five-year-old knowledge about fermentation. No, it's so simple. Um, fermentation, again, has been around for at least 8,000 years, you know, mm -hmm. and why? Because you know, they didn't quite know, perhaps they didn't know the health benefits of it. They just didn't have refrigerators. So when you get all these vegetables, when you ferment them, they'll last. The bacteria, the good bacteria, protect it from the bad bacteria. So you're literally selectively breeding these probiotics. And they're probiotics to us because these bacteria are the same bacteria that we want in our body. So when we, when we, you know, breed them using this method, you, it's literally protecting them from the bad bacteria getting in. So you can, 
you know, the Korean, Korean people are very big into kimchi, which is a fermented food. And mm-hmm. I have a lot of Korean friends. They, their grandmothers will sometimes ferment the kimchi for a year. It could literally sit for a year. It will not go bad. Now, I don't recommend that, you know, like, I mean, I, I don't recommend it or, or not recommend it. Just be careful. But um, I like to do a week. After that week, you put it in the fridge, it'll last forever, you know? So to answer your question, um, I use like a 32 ounce mason jar. Okay. So you could fit like, you know, six or seven pickles in there, those mini pickles, um, or you could do a big thing of sauerkraut, you know? So if it's two people and you, and you love it and you just, again, you don't need a lot of it, a little bit in your salad, gives so much flavor or with, with a meal, you know, anything you're eating, just put a little bit with it. So if you if you have two or three people in your family and you're eating like two tablespoons each a day, probably last you a week. Hmm. But while, if, if you want, you know, you, you, you could just get like three of these Mason jars. So you could make all three of them at once. And again, it won't go bad. So if you make all three, you put, put them in the fridge, the other two are going to be, they're going to be good to go whenever you need them. So that could last you a month. And again, it takes you 15 minutes to make. You just, the only time it takes is chopping up the cabbage. That's pretty much all the work you're doing. Okay. So you just put it in the jar and and we'll find that information on your website. Yes. And again, people can get one free lesson from you mm-hmm. to, to learn how the, the basics of it. So let's, let's take a step back here on grocery shopping. Mm-hmm. Um, First of all, what should I, what should I absolutely need? What do I need to buy in order to do this right? You mean fermentation and, or just food? The whole thing. Start, you know, like what kind of jars do I get? Where do I get them? And then what do I buy at the grocery store? What are the ideal foods Mm -hmm. to ferment? Oh, for fermentation, you want to focus on that. Because in my program, again, I teach, this is another challenge. And again, one thing I'm super grateful for my father he took, he did all the cooking in the house. So he took me food shopping since I was five years old and he would just let me run around and go look at the foods. And he taught me how to read the labels. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't allowed to get anything with artificial colors or flavors. And so shopping for me has such a nostalgic thing. And, you know, whenever I go to a new country, I'm like, take me to the market. I want to go see the foods. I want to, you know, that's just the most exciting thing for me is food shopping, the whole thing, shopping, cooking, eating. So I know a lot of people are intimidated by shopping and cooking. Mm-hmm. So I, I really make it so simple. In my program, you're going to, I give lists of, for every one of the skills, there's going to be a list of foods. And then next to that food, it'll say, you can get this at Walmart, Whole Foods, tra- it, it'll list all the places because I only use organic vegetables. So, you know, so it'll show you exactly where you can get the organic versions and they're, you know, and, and I always put the places that have the best prices. So, um, so that, so that's just in general, when you're talking about the fermented vegetables, again, everyone who, who contacts me, who takes the program, I'm going to give all the links, um, the, the, the Mason jars, you know, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them at whole foods, the 32 ounce mate, wide mm-hmm. mouth Mason jar. Mm-hmm. Um, believe it or not, Walmart, you can get 12 of them for like 12 bucks. So mm. I, I, I've got, I've bought a lot of them and I give them as gifts. I'll make sauerkraut and I just, it's a perfect gift. You show up at a party with a thing of fermented vegetables. Nobody knows how to do that anymore. Right. Meanwhile, 100 years ago, everyone knew how to do it. It was before refrigerators. Everybody knew how to do it. You know, you go to you go to Europe. They were making sauerkraut. You go to, you know, China, Japan, Korea. They're making kimchi. In Japan, they call it skemono. They eat 100 different types of fermented things. It's like every meal they're going to have it. And we don't eat it. So the mason jars and then the fermentation tops. Amazon, you know, you can get them on Amazon. And again, I provide all the links to the to the ones I recommend. So you, you mentioned the microbiome. I'm hearing a lot about microbiome. And apparently, a lot of people have digestive problems, they have stomach problems. So talk about the microbiome, uh, what it is, why it's important to take care of it, and um, what people can do to actually heal their gut. This is actually the most exciting part. Um, of, of all the research that's coming up to me, of course, you know, like the microbiome. So Dr. B talks about, you know, having 35,000 different probiotics, mm-hmm. each of them interacting with each other. 
I mean, it's so complicated, we're never going to figure this whole thing out. But what we know is that there is one bacteria, particularly, you don't have to memorize this, it's called acromancia. And that is a very unique one because, and, 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 and in, in breast milk, we, we, we get, like babies get a certain type of sugar that feeds this acromancia because it's so important to protect the lining of the gut. So that's really important. And that, it also, it, these acromancia eat the mucus lining, which causes the, the, the lining to get stronger. So that's, and that protects the whole gut. And that's causing a lot of problems, just this one acromancia. And mm -hmm. guess what? The best way to feed the acromancia is apples. The apple skin, if you take off the skin, you're not going to get the benefit. So the mm. apple skin feeds this incredibly important, maybe the most important bacteria. But that's just the beginning. That's one of 35,000 species. We now know that those species, they turn our genes on and off. They, they produce serotonin and neurotransmitters, and they also regulate hormones. So it's almost like there's a, there are another being living inside of us that we have a absolute uh you know symbiotic relationship with mm -hmm. so i'm really trying to get people to understand when you eat you're not eating for yourself you're mostly eating for them and and, and each one of these thirty-five thousand bacteria they like a different type of fiber so for example, one bacteria might like broccoli, one bacteria might like kidney beans, another bacteria might like black beans. So again, that's where the that's why Dr. B talks about the diversity of fibers. So so by feeding them and and just getting a robust he, he also describes it as like going to the gym. When you first go to the gym, you can't lift heavy weights. So if you try to take on too much fiber from going from the sad diet, right. now you're going to have some bloating. That's a normal part of the process. So in his book, he has all these ways that you can, you can gradually get into it. If you're having a problem with beans, just start off with like four beans in a meal. Just eat four of them. Because when you eat those four beans, you're going to start to breed the bacteria, that particular bacteria. And, and then you increase it, just like in the gym. You increase the amount of fiber. Interesting fact, you know, the FDA recommends... 32 grams of fiber for, per day for men and 25 for women. And 97% of Americans aren't even hitting that. 97%. But guess what? Dr. B recommends 75 grams of fiber. So forget about And I hit that every day because, you know, the, the hunter-gatherer people, we're, we're hitting that. And we know that from like, you know, and, and we know the ancient people from their stool samples. We know now they weren't eating woolly mammoths. They weren't eating this meat like they make right. us. It was, it was, they were getting a tremendous amount. So, so the, um, yeah, so, 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 yeah, we, we, it, it's like, it's, it's such a new topic. But well, the more you get the, 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 they do, they do all sorts of things. Well, you know, what, what's so intriguing to me is um, that people are not connecting the dots between what they eat and the number of diseases that have Tell become commonplace. I mean, you know, colon cancer is now common. Prostate cancer is common. Breast cancer is common. Uh, lung cancer, brain cancer, all of those uh, years ago, it was kind of like, if somebody would get it, it was a, it was a rarity. I, I know growing up, uh, I'm going to be 69 in a couple of months. And as a kid in the fifties, we never heard of people having cancer, diabetes, or any of the diseases that now they have commercials on TV, take this drug and it'll fix it. It's like, no, 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 no. Go to the, the basics and go to the core. And the most people, like you said, do not get enough fiber in their diet and they're not connecting the dots. They think that that magic pill is going to fix them. And so with somebody just starting out with a plant-based diet, take them through a simple shopping trip. Like what, what would be some nice things? You said start with four beans, which seems so minimal. And yet for a lot of people, that's quite a bit. And their, their body's going, oh my gosh, I'm getting these nutrients. But what let's start with a simple shopping trip. What would be some nice additions that somebody could add to their grocery list to start on a plant-based diet? Yeah, great question. Yeah. It, so if you're not ready to do a lot of cooking and you haven't taken my program yet, 
you know, just start off with, you, I mean, start with maybe romaine lettuce. Uh, or if you're a little more adventurous, grab some kale, arugula. You know, if you have no time, I try to make this as accommodating as possible. You have no time, get one of those big cr crates of um, organic spring mix or mm -hmm. arugula. Mm -hmm. So start off with a green. I always recommend a lot of greens because, you know, they, they give us nitric oxide. They're super high in minerals. They're like pretty much the most nutrient rich foods there are. Dr. B today re recommended collard greens. So... You get the greens, right? Um, you know, get a can of organic beans, you know, instead of cooking the beans. So you can just start with that. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, because I'm trying to, I'm using my program. Um, for the dressing, I have this simple recipe. It's a whole food dressing. So you're not get, you're not using any oil. You're using tahini and, and balsamic vinegar. Mm -hmm. So... I would say, like, again, if you haven't, in my program, and I use miso also, which is another fermented food from, from Japan. So if you haven't even done that, if you're just at the basics, grab some tahini, grab some balsamic vinegar. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, you know, you got the salad, you got the beans, you got the balsamic, get an apple, get some cucumbers, chop up the cucumber, chop up the apple. This is, everybody loves this. I always put apples in my salad. Because I told you the benefits of them, they add this amazing sweetness and crunch. Mm -hmm. Chop up the apple, and j just there you have a great a great meal. Now you know if you if you want to learn, you know I teach people how to make millet and rice. So you know that's another thing you could add, and then potatoes and sweet potatoes. So I, I eat potatoes and sweet potatoes every day. Mm -hmm. and again, that's one of the skills in my program: how to roast potatoes and sweet potatoes and i recommend there's three types of sweet potatoes you can get the orange ones the purple ones and then the white japanese ones and each one of them again the different colors feed the different bacteria so why not get all three you know and and, and when you look at the food you can go on my instagram you can see my food they're all so colorful and and um so so that's that's a that's a great way to start you could also you know you could go buy uh, you know, make sure it's in the refrigerator section, some sauerkraut or some kimchi if you don't, if you're not ready to make it. So, so that's a good place to start. Um, so the, the canned sauerkraut would not be what you recommend? No. Okay. If, okay. if it's pasteurized, it literally kills the bad bacteria okay. and the good bacteria. Okay. So when you go to the store, you know, you can go, I was saw it at Walmart. I took a picture of it. You get a bag of 16 ounce of sauerkraut. Okay. Right, they have different flavors. Actually, don't even taste that good. And I think it was like seven ninety nine for a pound. Whereas you could make the when I when you learn how to make it, you can make a thirty two ounce thing for like fifty cents instead oh my of. Gosh. And, and think of that for the rest of your life. If you're making this every single every two weeks, you're making another thing of sauerkraut. Each time, you're saving six fifty. Well, you know, it's incredible because a lot of people say, oh, that that vegan diet, they call it a vegan diet. Yeah. It's not veganism is not a diet. It's a philosophy. It's the, for the okay. animals. It's the plant based eating that is more of the diet. But people go, oh, it's so expensive. And the yeah. reality is, is it's a lot less expensive. Um, mm -hmm. Usually what I do when I go to the grocery stores, whoever's in line, I I know they're going to have meat in their cart. So I always go. Huh? Uh, how much is meat these days? Because I don't eat meat, and they they look at me like I have two heads. Like you don't eat meat? How could you not? And so I, it's a way to start a conversation about you know the fact that they have something in their cart that is dead energy, and how can they shop more cost effectively? So, um, what? How would? How much savings do you think somebody could make from going from a carnivore diet that's unhealthy, that's you know bad for the microbiome? That, that is adding excess weight, inflammation, and all that to going to a inexpensive plant-based diet. How much do you think people could save? Uh, just off the top of my head, like if you're if you're eating, especially a carnivore diet, and you're really doing like the grass-fed, you're trying to get the high quality, you know, the high quality meat. Yeah, you know, high quality. You I know, would say. Marks. I would say like you're you're probably going to save like eighty percent. You're probably going to be spending 20% because I'll just run off some numbers. And this is at Whole Foods. I recommend find your local co-op. 
you can find a local. So we have a we have a health food store here. I'll give a shout out called Chamberlain's, and I love their bulk section. So and every Tuesday, I think it's ten percent off everything, right? Mm. And sometimes on their anniversaries, a couple times a year, they do twenty percent off. So you can get black beans there without the discount. One sixty nine a pound, organic. One sixty nine a pound. A pound of beans, when you soak them and cook them, they triple in size. So, and and like gram for gram, beans have just as much protein as meat without mm -hmm. the saturated fat and with a ton of fiber. Beans are the most fiber dense foods there are. So for one sixty nine a pound, right? That's a week's worth of protein, a whole week for one sixty nine. Whereas you know you're getting you get a piece of steak. I mean, I, I don't even, you're right. I don't know the prices anymore either, but they've gone up and, and that's just one bean, right? And then e even at Whole Foods, you can get garbanzo beans, kidney beans, two forty nine dollars a pound. You have mm -hmm. the prime card, you get a discount, you know? So that's just the beans, right? Then we're talking about, um, you know, I go to Trader Joe's a lot too. The organic tahini, instead of buying like a, a salad dressing, you know, paleo salad dressing, mm -hmm. You know, with all this stevia and all this crap, like you could just make this dressing. Like ten ounces of tahini um, is three ninety nine. Uh, millet, my favorite grain, two forty nine a pound. You know, again, this is so inexpensive. It's it's insane. You know, oh, oh, and I I, for, I forgot to mention. That's what I wanted to mention on your shopping list. Get a lot of fruit. I prefer organic because if you're gonna eat the skin. You do want it to be organic. Right. But, but, but when you go to Whole Foods, when things are in season, uh, when you go to Whole Foods, like you can get like sometimes a pint of blueberries, which are so good for you. I mean, there's so much scientific evidence about um, blueberries, the, co the purple color. So uh, they're like two forty nine dollars a pint, maybe $3 mm -hmm. a pint, mm -hmm. strawberries. So get as many different fruits that are in season, preferably, and then you, you know, so, so again, not expensive. It's not expensive and they nice. fill you up. They fill it like, you know, all that fiber will fill you up. So you wind up, you wind up taking in less calories, but you feel more full. Absolutely. Well, you know, and it's, it's always intriguing to me how people, they, they do apples to oranges really, because they compare a meal at McDonald's, for example, mm -hmm. to a really healthy whole food plant-based meal. And the, the thing is, is to look at your short-term cost compared to your long-term cost, because, uh, it, you know, more every day we have evidence that the way people are eating is literally killing them in an untimely way. And the quality of life is garbage because like this weekend on Saturday, I took my dog out to the river. I have a favorite place I go running. We did about an hour of run walk. Then later I went to the park and took my other dog and I did about an hour there, worked in my garden for a while. And you know, I'm, I'm what they call a, an old woman. I'm a senior citizen. I'm going to be, I'm a year away from 70 and my gosh, it's like eating plant-based that keeps me so vibrant, so healthy, and I have a quality of life that most people can't even imagine because of the way they're eating. So with that, um, how is it that, again, people can get in touch with you, Jason? Yeah, the best way is come on my website, um, culinarywisdomskills.com. There's a little contact form at the bottom. Please reach out to me or, or jason.demchuk, D-E-M-C-H-O-K, at gmail.com. You can okay. just email me. And you you alluded to your program. So tell us more about your program and uh, what the benefits of somebody enrolling in your program would be. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for asking. So my program, I, I have taken all my 30 years of training and all the science I've been studying. And I, you know, again, I work with doctors. They don't have a lot of time. So I'm, I'm like, how? and I listen to, I, I'm in all these groups. I'm sure you are too. We listen to all, all these doctors and they they don't have the time themselves to cook. I ask them what they eat. I always ask these lifestyle medicine doctors. They know what to eat. And they're like, oh, I ate a can of beans today. Or mm -hmm. it's like, you know, so so they're not they're not eating well. So I, I felt compassion. I'm like, I need to make this as easy and time saving as possible. Right. So my whole program is based on the concept that you could make a whole week's worth of food in two hours. And, that, and, and when I say a whole week's worth, I mean of diverse fiber with all, like you read all the books, Mastering Diabetes, Fiber Fueled, 
this checks off all the boxes in mm -hmm. those books. So for example, you get like, you can, depending on, you know, this is for one person, for me, right? Three pounds of potatoes and like two pounds of sweet potatoes. It literally, so let's say you're gonna do this on Sunday. You're gonna prep on Sunday. You, you're going to, uh, it's gonna take you 10 minutes to chop up the potatoes the way I recommend it. I show it all in my video. Mm -hmm. So I show you how to cut, how to do everything. You put them on the baking tray, you put them in the oven, you hit the button, starts baking. While that's going, you turn on the pot with the millet. So the millet starts boiling and you wait for it to boil. Then you lower the temperature and just let it kind of steam. Then you go on your instant pot, which do you have an instant pot? You know, I don't, I have, I do crock pot cooking. And for some reason I have an aversion to instant pots. You know, I I've heard the horror stories of them exploding and everything. So have I just really? get over my fear. Yeah, you know, a lot of people have that fear, but no, I, I've never heard of one exploding. I know the old pressure cookers before. Maybe, like, that's, you know, maybe yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Well, you, you know, know what it, it is it's also? It's like I go way back, so. <laughs> you know what it is too? Because I lived in I lived in India. I lived in South America. They used the, the old school pressure cookers. Right. I think the misconception about them exploding is people have made bombs. You can make a bomb with a pressure oh, cooker. So I think okay. people have conflated that. But no, the Instant Pot is safe and, and super easy. Um, so, you know, again, I teach people, you hit three buttons, beep, 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 and then the beans start cooking. And it's just, you don't have to do anything. So that's cooking. So you got the potatoes in the oven, you got the millet on the stove, you got the, you know, you got the beans cooking. While that's going on, you make the dressing, you chop up the kale for the week, you know, and, um, Oh, I also teach how to sprout. So sprouting is another superfood. Um, broccoli sprouts, they have a hundred times more sulforaphane, which is a very which which has been shown to really reduce cancer cells and also um, increase uh, brain activity. So I teach people how to sprout. Sprouting, you take a, two tablespoons of seeds, you water them twice a day. In three to four days, you have an entire jar full of vegetables you could there's a guy um his name is doug something he, he's called the sprout man on on instagram and mm -hmm. he lived in the desert like arizona desert and lived off sprouts wow so so i teach the sprouts and and the fermented vegetable my point is like in two hours you get all that food done then you just put it in these nice glass invest in some nice uh glass containers so I got a big one like this for the potatoes. So mm -hmm. I put all the potatoes in there, put it in the fridge. Take the beans, strain them out, put them in a jar, put it in the fridge. The millet, put it in the fridge. So now everything is neatly organized in the right. fridge. You have the dressings. Oh, I also do pickling. Pickling is different from fermentation. You're, you're using vinegar. So one of the things I love is balsamic uh, onions. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, onions are another mm. type of food. They, they're called a prebiotic. Um, or uh, resistant starch. Resistant starch is just like fiber, but it, again, it just feeds different types of bacteria. So Dr. B, he mentions, um, or, or, or Dr. Furman and Dr. B, they both have their little acronyms. Dr. Furman calls it G-bombs. Yes. Right? So one of the bombs, G, like G, G is green, greens, beans, O stands for onions, right? Because the onions and the garlic and the leeks have a lot of resistant starch. So when you cook it, you lose it. But when you pickle it, it's, you get the best of both worlds because when you put them in balsamic uh, vinegar. And all, when you go on the internet, all these, rec all these recipes for, for pickled onions, they always add sugar to it. It makes no sense. It's right. sweet enough with the balsamic vinegar. You soak them there 24 hours to 48 hours. And now you have all the benefits of raw onions without that onion, onion breath. Right. You don't get the onion breath. And it's sweet. So you take a tablespoon of that, throw it in the, in the salad. So in my program, after you do all these things, you get to make something called the Buddha bowl. The Buddha bowl it comes from the idea that the Buddha, the Buddhist monks used to go into the village with a bowl and people would just put food in the bowl and everything would be mixed in one bowl and they would eat everything out of one bowl. So you have the potatoes, the beans, the greens, the pickled onions, the dressing, the sprouts, the sauerkraut, you have all that stuff. Now, every day, you know, you just put it in a bowl and I actually do one bowl 
for two, 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 I, I make one bowl in the morning and that's for two meals. Mm -hmm. So it saves even more time. I just throw it all together. I keep the dressing separate. So then you, I eat one and then I take the other one to go. If I go to work, if I go so if I'm anywhere I go, I have a Buddha bowl with me. So, um, so that's the Buddha bowl. But then I also do some consultation beyond my program. If people want a little bit more, I offer, like, I, I recommend like two sessions with me. I find out what they like to eat, Mexican, Indian, what flavors they like. And then I'll teach them how to make like a, like a, a vegetable broth, right? So you make this broth, you save the broth. Now you want a soup, you just throw the broth on the, on the stove uh, and then you, you heat it up. And all you have to do is take the potatoes, the beans, the greens, the grains, you throw it in there. It takes five minutes because everything's already cooked. And I got to add one more thing. I got to add one more thing. I know okay. I'm talking a lot, but this is a cool fact also. Potatoes and beans and, and grains, believe it or not, when you cook them, people are like, oh, it's, it's not fresh. Actually, when you take those foods, put them in the refrigerator, let them cool off. 30% of the carbohydrates turn into resistant starch. It's called retrograde resistant starch. You can't make this up. So... In other words, by by cooking all of these potatoes and green, uh, sorry, potatoes, beans, and grains, and then putting them in, in in bulk, and then keeping them in the fridge, and then the next day, if I live in Florida, so it's always hot, so I always like to eat cold stuff. So, the, you take the cold potatoes, you're getting thirty percent more of this resistant starch and less calories. But again, even if you take those potatoes and you reheat them. In the soup, for example, you're still getting the benefits. So it's just amazing. That's incredible. That's incredible. You know, I'm I'm anxious to to <laughs> dig into this and and uh, diversify my cooking because I have to tell you, I'm kind of a boring cook. And well, this is what I, I find from a yeah. lot of plant based people. They get it. They love it. But I'm like, why not take it to the next level? And and I I notice with with people people fall off. So I'm constantly trying to figure out how can, because once you get it going, you're never going to fall off. Once, once you, so what I try to do now is, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm, when people take my program, it's not just videos. So all the, all the cooking things are videos, but I like to interact with everyone who takes it, you know, check in with them. And what I recommend is like make one or two of these skills, like pick a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have time on Sunday or I have time on Monday. Okay, you're going to make just these two of the eight skills. Okay, you make it. The next week, you're going to get all the ingredients for those same two skills plus add a third one. So now we're going to get the potatoes and the sweet potatoes. So now this Sunday or this Monday, you're going to make the salad and the dressing and the potatoes. And mm -hmm. you see, oh, that was easy. Then the next week when you go shopping, and I even say, what day you want to go shopping? Oh, Thursday. Okay, so Thursday when you go shopping, you're going to get everything you got the last two weeks, but now you're going to add the beans. So then, so be that. So I'm really trying to just make it smooth, and it's very right. challenging. I have to admit, it is not easy. It is easy, but it's hard for people to realize how easy it is. And right. once you, you know, it takes like 21 days to make a habit. You know, it's like once you make it a habit. And you just notice, okay, I'm running out of beans. Okay, I'll just make the beans tomorrow. It, 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 to me, it's it's just constant. Like I, I'm always looking in my, when I have my fridge, oh, I'm running low on potatoes. Okay, I'm gonna make potatoes tomorrow. And also I recommend like for the, for the certain foods that don't go bad, like the tahini and the vinegar, stock up on it. You know, just buy a bunch of it. So this way you don't have to go every time you need it. Oh, I gotta go get tahini. Buy four of them, buy four jars of it. This way you have it in, in, right. in your, it's simple stuff, but, you know, it's... Uh... Well, you know, I, I want to take a little uh, side side road here on detoxification. You, you talk about detoxification and what exactly is that and what's the benefit for somebody implementing detoxification in their life and how well, do they a, do it? That's an, that's an amazing topic. Um, again, Dr. Shen Hong Lu is probably the world's leader on this, but... Um, so there's two types of detoxification. Eating a whole food plant-based diet with fiber will definitely help you detoxify more than animal products. Another problem with animal products is especially chicken or fish, believe it or not. All of the toxins, all the glyphosate, the agricultural 
toxins, the plastics, the heavy metals. We've done some horrible things to this planet. Mm -hmm. That all goes into the ocean. It goes into the mm -hmm. rivers. It, it eventually gets into the ocean. It, it gets into the fish. It gets into the shrimp, right? And farm-raised fish is just as bad. Chicken has the highest amount of plastic in it. So even if you're getting organic, free-range chicken, you're just getting so much toxins in it because the toxins are everywhere. This is really sad reality. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the cow milk. It's in the eggs. There's just these plastics and toxins. So cutting that out of your diet is going to eliminate a huge amount. Right. But if you want to go further, which I highly recommend, that's that's another conversation. This is something I do with Dr. Liu, um, where you're going to need to do, you know, you'll, you'll see these products like, oh, do this like 10 day detox. And those are actually dangerous because if you're just pulling out toxins without like a, you know, without a scientific background like Dr. Lou has, mm -hmm. you're actually, and if you're not doing a plant-based diet with a lot of fiber, you run the risk of pulling toxins out into your bloodstream just to get reabsorbed into your body. So the plant-based diet, high fiber diet is incredibly important, but uh, Dr. Lou uses um, testing urine testing, heavy metal testing, mm -hmm. to see what toxins you have. So it's important to see what you have. And she also looks at genetics because we, we all have different genetic um, characteristics that, that some of us have a more difficult time detoxing. So if we have that, you know, again, she has natural products that, that we do on a regular basis because we're getting bombarded every day with toxins. Right. So using her products, we get the toxins out on a daily basis. And then you can see from testing that the toxins are coming out. And so I can't I, make any claims here, but you, you do see a lot of right, right. diseases. Well, and so the first step of detoxification is to switch from a carnivore diet to a oh, yeah. whole food plant-based. And uh, in some circles, like the National Health Association, they call it plant exclusive, where it's really clear that you're doing a really high level way of eating. So that would be step one in detoxification. Step, absolutely. Step one, and I would say step two or organic. There's, okay. There's, we, we don't have the luxury to not get organic anymore. Like if yeah, you get a and, strawberry, if you eat a strawberry, like that's the most toxic uh, right. plant is a strawberry. Unless you, know? you grow your own. Unless yeah, you yeah. grow your own, of course. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and then, um, but even if you grow your own, you still want to check, test your soil to see what's in there because. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. but, but I mean, again, I was saying like organic beans are 169 organic, right? How much cheaper can you get? You know, you get it non-organic. You're like one one twenty nine. You know, sometimes right. I was actually in the store the other day. I saw kiwis in Whole Foods. The organic or Trader Joe's, the organic was actually cheaper than the regular. It was like I've some seen that at a few places. It, it's, it's weird like when that happens, but a lot of times in Whole Foods, like some the organic will be on sale. But yeah, organic is not perfect. Right, but right. It's just like you know, Americans just. <laughs> Europeans too now. Everybody wants everything so cheap, but then they'll go buy a super expensive car. It's like save the money on the car and just invest in your health. Just buy right. the organic food. You deserve it. You deserve Absolutely. it. People are like, oh, I can't afford organic. It's like, no, you deserve it. Well, you know, and it's interesting because, you know, not only do they buy the expensive cars, they buy the designer coffee and things, about, oh, yeah. you know, go to Starbucks, but, and, and, there is a reality that we live in with within the United States where some areas have been redlined. I mean, that that has been proven. And unfortunately, it's usually areas with um, a high concentration of people of color uh, where they don't have grocery stores. They don't have the transportation. So there are some real limitations for some people. But on average, most people have the availability of the organic foods, of the grocery stores, of the, uh, the open markets. Like in Eugene, we have a Saturday market that they've extended it into the winter hours. It's in an enclosed area and it's supporting local businesses, the local farmers. So um, Jason, this has been delightful. And again, tell people how they can get in touch with you. Well, can I just say one thing based on what sure. you just said? You go into any neighborhood in America, unfortunately, there's a Walmart and, and Aldi's is a little bit better. They now carry a huge amount of organic food at Walmart. So you know, even if so, so yes, part of my mission is absolutely to help those neighborhoods, you know, right. it starts with the doctors, 
we, you know, we got, that's my mission is to get the doctors healthy and educated on this. And then, when, and then to help, you know, ha- they're the ones who are going to really be the heroes to help those, you know, neighborhoods that really need it. So there's a lot of work to be done. And, and that's one thing I got to say, you and everyone, two years ago, I, I came into this community and everybody has this reputation. People have this idea that vegans are angry. And that's what I thought. It's the most amazing, loving, welcoming, cooperative community I've ever Absolutely. met. Like it is just, I met Angela. Angela introduced me to you and so many people. It's just like, oh, you got to meet this person. Now here I am on a podcast and it's wonderful. Yes, so, it is. Well, thank and you I so think much. The- I think the propaganda around angry vegans uh, are the carnivores who don't want to give up their meat. It's like, oh, okay. But, it's so uh, fascinating, like, what people will do to hold on to their addiction. And, and I feel sorry for them. It's like, it's so complicated. I have to learn. I've learned to, you know, not get pulled into arguments and, like, absolutely. You know, when, when it's, it's such a challenge. Because, because at the end of the day, we just have this amazing, this amazing gift that is delicious food, we feel great. We get so much less disease. And, and, and another bonus is when you stop taking from animals, whether it's their flesh, their eggs, or their breast milk, you know, for their babies, when you stop taking from the animals and then you look in an animal's eyes, there's a complete different connection. It's it, a whole just, you different, just feel, yes. And I didn't even see that coming. I was really motivated by my health at first. Of course, I was like, oh, it's great. I don't have to harm the animals. But now it's a whole new level. I feel so much more connected to the earth. You know, um, my heart's more open because because when you have to, when you're going to eat something or exploit something or even kill something in a war, you have to train the soldiers to look down, to dehumanize those people. So when you do that, you have to close your heart to a certain species of animal if you're eating pigs or now I don't have to do that. Now right. I just get to be in a complete state of love because I don't have any subconscious shame and guilt because I'm not exploiting them. You know, you you really, you opened up what could be a whole new conversation, but it's <laughs> it's you. so true. A lot of the violence that we experience today is a result of we, we are putting dead energy into our, well, carnivores are putting that dead energy, the, the amount of depression, uh, the diseases that we have, a, a lot of that, most of it could be eliminated simply by changing what we put into our body. So Jason, this has been delightful. Thank you. I, I wish you the greatest success. And I just am so happy that I brought you on the show because you have a great message and I encourage people to check out your website. We'll put everything in the show notes and um, just wishing everybody the greatest success with your health, with the environment, with the love of the animals. This is Kathleen Gage with the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show. Have a great day, a great evening, a great middle of the night whenever you're consuming this information. Thank you for your commitment to an ethical life through plant-based food choices the kind of choices that are kind to your body, the environment, and most of all, animals. Be sure to leave a review and rating of the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show.